All right. So Mike was telling me about that iboga, the mother plant in Africa, which is a tree bark. She and I said he kind of helped introduce them. Not that they don't already know each other, but here I'm trying to add some. I'm going to add some folks to this call here. Just hang on. So he's introducing Aya with Iboga, like standing in the middle, symbolically, they would actually show up. Whenever you're in, the, you're in the dream space, or rather in altered reality space, which is more actor, accurate, Ed and Lucas, no, that's gotcha. I'm going to call you Eddie. How's Lucas, that? Sir. Eddie Montero. We're Americans. No, I'm joking with you. But so, uh, Misty asked how ayahuasca retreats were, and they were great. And uh, one more person, and then I'm going to be able to be coherent here, adding folks. So actually, he was shown to help reintroduce them, or rather, at another level, introduce Aya and Iboga to each other, which is, makes sense because of the unification that's happening on the planet. You know, basically we're... This is Shannon. Hi, Shannon. Hi. Hey. We're just talking. talking. I'm telling you a little bit about ayahuasca Ayahuasca. and the retreat we just did. So, I'm hearing a little bit of an echo. So, you guys on Skype, if you can mute yourself, um, unless you want to ask a question in a minute, just come back in. So, yeah, there's a unification going on, obviously, on the planet, um, a annihilation of space-time, so that then these, all these things are not going to work together. And so the two most powerful plants on the planet, 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 plant, plant, planet, um, are obviously going to work together even more. So we actually drank a mixture. The first three were traditional cielo ayahuasca, yellow or white ayahuasca, and then with usually a little bit of tobacco. Tobacco is a master healing plant. <clears throat> Obviously not by Philip Morris, where you add all kinds of chemicals and crapola. But tobacco is a, is a master healing plant. That's what's been used in all kinds of native ceremonies forever. Have a, has a volition of its own. Um, they're all entities. They're actually beings. They are, um, you know, energies archetypes in a sense, not archetypes, but archetypes are big energies that are giant sort of elemental thought forms, morphic field thought forms. But, so yeah, in, so we did a little bit, the last two ceremonies we had Wachuma, which is the San Pedro cactus, mixed with thunder and cielo ayahuasca, <clears throat> and a little bit of iboga, not enough, I mean enough to add that if you want to meet her, but just as an introduction, and then tobacco as well. So it's very interesting. And I'm going to repeat it, but as Mike had told me, they basically, he stood in cyberspace. You can think of it as thought space. It's sort of like imagine the natural, organic cyberspace. Cyberspace on the Internet is an artificial one. You know, It's one that we're creating basically owned by the CIA, which is Facebook. <laughs> I'm kidding, but not really. Um, and uh, there's kill switches on the Internet, you know. The cabals that run the world can, can if they want to, at any moment, kill, kill switch the Internet. Um, like if Julian Assange actually started dumping the real shit, then, you know, he might see the Internet having massive, quote, problems, unquote, all of a sudden. But it's also regulated by something much bigger than the, quote, evil cabals. So, uh, but if we push too hard against the natural evolution of the Tao, then you tend to get blowback and feedback. Uh, So there's a natural timing to everything being revealed, the age of revelation. So... Yeah, it was beautiful. Anyway, thoughts, comments, questions, what's on your heart? Um, Yeah. If you're on Skype, you're muted. Let's see. 
there anybody I'm missing here? Randy, he hasn't checked in. Becky, those guys will listen later. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so what that triggered for me was actually how, how, how it works when you die. There's no death. You can't get out of it. <laughs> Sorry, there's no death. You just wake up somewhere else. Right? Think about, just feel that for a minute. There's no death. We tried to create death because a part of us wishes to be out of existence. It's the death wish. Just feel it. When you're suffering and you're in pain, don't you want the morphine? Yeah. So when you're in spiritual, emotional, mental, in, when you're in consciousness suffering, don't you want out of the pain? You want out, feel this, of consciousness. You want to not be conscious anymore. I'm going to go a little deep, a little heavy with this. So all this stuff where people say, and here's how the denial game works. People say, oh, you live forever. You know, basic religionism stuff. Eternal life. That's somehow supposed to bring solace. They rest in peace now. They went to a better place. All that stuff is to give some hope because we fear eternal death. Where the reality, most people, in, the reality is always like on the back of my book. What if almost everything you've been ever told is wrong? Most things are from program normal sort of conditioned reality most things are 180 degrees completely opposite so the people that actually yak about eternal life and religionism are actually here it comes big fucking truth bomb actually seeking permanent death the opposite instead of eternal life they're actually seeking permanent obliteration being removed out of consciousness. But if you, what I just said, if you surface this truth, see, if you surface a major truth, a foundation of a building, if you pull the main beams of the foundation of a building, the whole thing fucking collapses. That's why 9-11 came down so easily, right? Because they had, had uh, thermite, uh, which is this, imagine like C4 explosive, you know, um, clay that was found all over 9-11 because they had wired the towers ahead of time. So it all came down in free fall. So when you undo the basic structures, the whole thing comes apart. So that truth right there, that those who yak about wanting eternal life are actually death seekers, permanent obliterations out of the consciousness. You can call them denial spirits. They have denied the creation. They do not like the creation. They do, not, they do not vibrate well with the creation. They don't want to exist because their existence, exit stance, look at the word ex existence, existence stance, you are exiting out of the oneness into a stance. Existence only exists because you are stepping outside of I and my father are one, I and my mother are one. In fact, that's why Buddhists, when they reach a certain level, go, all of creation is a reflection of the fallen state. The only reason existence exists is because we've fallen away from oneness. In the beginning, God, Source, Father, Mother just is with itself. And then there's an impulse for experience you could say drama galactic wars creatures bodies creating light let there be light something wants out of the humming one the humming being oneness no space time exists just imagine it feel it with your heart and your belly full conscious breath let it 
trigger, activate whatever in you. Imagine before creation, before there was space or time. There's no time. There just is isness. That's when every tradition at Cartoli, that's all he's doing. He is, is in the isness. Be here now. Be here now annihilates time. Be here now annihilates time. All things exist in one place. This is why Jesus can manifest thousands of physical bodies of himself this very day, this very next 24 hours. Jesus will be existing in thousands of physical bodies appearing to people and millions of people that he will be interacting with. Why? Because, just like any master, Sai Baba, doesn't matter, Shiva, Ayahuasca for that matter. Ayahuasca works in thousands of ceremonies every night. How does she do that? How does she do that? Because she, they have, quote, annihilated or recall. It's a recall, recall of space and time. This, this is a dangerous creation. We've issued a recall of space and time. Actual physica, physics. Now, this is just to sow seeds because this stuff's going to start happening to hundreds of thousands of humans on the planet. We're going to start coexisting in multiple time space. So when this starts happening to you, if you know a little bit ahead of time, you won't think you're actually going crazy or scare the shit out of yourself as much. You'll still be scared. So space-time is a creation. Just feel it. Let your bones hear it and feel it. You are the portal. You are the stargate portal. I am a stargate. I am an alchemist. I am an accessor. I am the dialer. I am the receiver and I am the sender. Yogananda used to say, your spinal column is the antenna as well as, and your heart and your belly are the uh, actual senders, and your nervous system is the antenna, the receiver. And you can tune your nervous system into anything on earth. We were doing it with Aya. She gives us an opening. It's like uh, here's a preview and a revealing of what you really are. She is the vine of the dead, the vine of souls. Because she gives you a six hour, eight hour, four hour, twelve hour, however long it might last. Because there's no time with her. Preview of what it's like to be dead. Except there is no death. It's a preview of what it's like when you leave this container and you go back into more permanent space. Like when my father came to me in my friend's backyard, he said, Duh! I just, I've all, this is more permanent. This is more fundamental where I am now. They call it heaven, they call it hell, they call it whatever, you know. They call it um, lokas, the Sanskrit word lokam. When Jesus has different, many mansions, many vibrate, imagine vibrational frequencies, radios, imagine vibrational frequency life force stations. It's like you tune a radio. Radio is very fucking crude, so is the television, compared to spiritual, emotional, multiple reality, this feeling. When you leave here, most people are completely unconscious. They are like victims of a train or a plane crash or a train wreck or a wreck of some stuff. They are, they are in sh- shock. When most people leave here, they need to be sedated, put down, just like you do with a trauma victim in a crash. So you got to sedate them, put a drip in them. Sometimes you have to knock them out. You have to make them go unconscious. Morphine the pain, a little in the mouth. That's what happens to most people for a while. I shouldn't say that. That's not not the accident. That happens to a lot of people that when they quote leave and die in their physical body. This is part of an education that we start realizing what's really going on. You can literally, with the bending of space-time, space-time is relative. 
So my father quote died. Place and then that other place. This often is the experience after you first go through the shock. Holy shit! I'm not that own personality. God is not after a person who's in the Bible, meaning your identity in this lifetime is basically erased like an uh, etch sketch. It's just you, oh. it, so it's a ghost print of something that was a human life. But you wake up and imagine this: you're sitting in the fourth, fifth dimension, and you kind of go. You, you're gone for what feels like two minutes, like you kind of are gone, like missing time. And in those two minutes of ten seconds, you time on Earth, and then you're right back up in the fourth, fifth dimension. You're like, oh shit! I just had this dream. It's like having a dream. Earth life can be like just like having a dream. So my father came back and talked to me. He said, Oh my God, I forgot this is much more real than I thought. That 80 years of me doing the crap on Earth was important. Feel it. Feel the stretching of time space. Feel relative time space dimension. Pop back. Oh, I just took a bath and had a dream. That's what Earth life is like from a more permanent, fundamental, primary place. The source. Pretty cool. It's just feel that. Wow. The whole drama on this whole life. My pains, my joys, my ecstasies, my hopelessness. It's just a little bubble, bubble, little bubble, bubble in space time. Like from higher, that's why the soul doesn't worry. All you could probably a kid or a daughter growing up, the first love. Like if you're a parent and you watch your daughter have her first heartbreak over a relationship when she's 14 or 15 or, or a more serious one, 17 or 18. You know it's not the end of the world. The first heartbreak, betrayal, breakup, it's a big drama. Imagine your whole life is that little tempest in a teacup as Shakespeare says. The whole of it, all the fucking cancer treatment at the end of your life, the birth, the war you were in, all of it is just a little, a little movement of wind in a teacup, a tempest in a teacup. The space time is flexible. It just occurs literally like like you just go right back and then somewhere in the fourth fifth dimension. Ah, I just had an earth life. That was kind of interesting. Pop, I'm back. I'm back here. Hey, guess what just happened? This is what I did. Let's watch the video. And they're like, nah, we've done that. Let's move on. <laughs> we've done a thousand of those. Literally true. And there's layers of this dream life. Sometimes you'll hear people say, we are just a dream of God. True. Layers and layers and layers of God. The God of Earth is obviously not perfect. He fucked up many different times. If God's omniscient and knows everything's going to happen, why would he, quote, allow suffering? Or, you know, I don't know, child rape or something. Pick the worst one, of course. What? So obviously God is learning. The God of Earth is not some omnipotent, immaculate, perfect God, or 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 it's a sadist, fucking torture, sadistic, fucking massacre. But that God is learning, just like you and me, I, just like we are learning. We're not fully vested yet. Then there's big gods, another layers of the onion, that are watching the child God. Our son, you could say. Our son is learning. The logos of planet Earth is learning. Mother Earth is learning. Would she willingly allow herself to be raped? And fracked and her, her, her whales killed and polluted? No. So she's learning. And the death denial people 
religionists can't accept a God that's still evolving. So they have to make God is impotent, impotent, impotent exactly. <laughs> God is omnipotent, where he's really impotent. But they can't admit that. So they put up these fake things. We have the perfect religion. Our God is perfect, cannot make mistakes. So they're, they're, ergo, it has to be we are pieces of shit, i.e. sinners. We suck. Denial spirits is a very interesting one. I know I'm putting a lot in here, but this is what's up, I guess. Denial spirits. Let's, I'm going to repeat this one. This is one of the deepest, hidden, obfuscated truths on the planet. Basically, there are spirits that do not want to exist. They want to go back to the oneness, but they do not want to have consciousness. Isn't consciousness painful? You know, when you're trying to drug yourself to death, why are those people up all night and sleep all day? Because the, the very light, consciousness, is painful to their existence and their eyes. And see how prevalent that is in our civilization. Oh, fuck, another day. Can I sleep in a little longer? Right? So this is giant collective death wish at wanting not to be conscious. Hello, Budweiser. Hello, heroin. Hello, food addiction. All of it. I want to get, I want to be sedated, right? Joey Ramone of the Ramones. I want to be sedated. Beat the brat with a baseball bat. Yeah, all that shit. The punks were just showing love kills. The punks were just reflecting the unacknowledged death wish. Consciousness is fucking hurtful. Love kills. I want to be sedated. They were surfacing that truth inside all of us. If we didn't have the death wish, there'd be no World War I, World War II, World War III, World War blowing up planets. If we didn't have a death wish, we wouldn't be killing ourselves. What's the death wish? What's the force in me that doesn't want to exist? And I'm not saying it's wrong. Get in touch with that part of you that doesn't want to exist. If you want to make the trouble of denial spirits, Stalin, Mao, Hitler... You know, black widow females that want to fucking annihilate their whole the babies they created, goddesses, Durgas, Kali's. It's just a big drama. Just a big drama. But when you don't acknowledge, notice, realize, accept what's going on then it operates in the black. Black projects for the CIA, secret space programs, secret things that assassinate John Lennon, Martin Luther King, R RFK, JFK, Gandhi, Olaf Palme, etc., etc. You get a group of 40 assassins that are on call for the cabal for the whole world that operate in the dark and because we want to see no evil hear no evil speak no evil we like to remain ignorant of what's really going on the ex-head for Batista in Cuba the dark secret police the torturing police they used to you know because the mafia ran Cuba before Castro why? Because we do want to fucking gamble and fucking get sedated and have hookers and, and part of the feminine wants to do that too and so forth. We want it. But we don't acknowledge it openly. We're schizophrenic. And the pain only comes from the schizophrenia, the divided soul. Madonna whore complex. I'll be a madam in a fucking brothel in Nevada and the next life I'll be, you know, a nun. The division, fractured consciousness, causes the pain. Why? Because you then, when you fracture it, it gets weaker. 
and you don't have enough energy to actually allow the natural Tao, the soft, comfortable flow. The sun is a very advanced soul. Not complete yet, or else he wouldn't have created a baby like the earth, right? But compared to us, that's an eternal shining star that is ever bubbling hydrogen fusion, energy, soul, so forth. So he's pretty damn pleasurable. He's not fully complete yet. There's an evolution. So that's the game. <clears throat> when you have a piece of denial, just like if you have a sickness in your body, it will show up. The first step that ayahuasca does with people generally as a theme is to let's clean up your body. <clears throat> let's clean up your energy fields. Uh, what you're ready for. Otherwise you send people into toxic shock syndrome, right? If the body tries, what kills people is their own body. Toxic shock is basically when your body, the fever gets too high <clears throat> and it's trying to clean itself too fast. It produces too much of a uh, fight back reaction and it actually ends up not being able to handle it. The body therefore uh, ceases to exist as a physical body. But I will try to clean that stuff up. And because we've been in avoidance denial for so long of certain aspects of consciousness, we've created hells by trying to deny them. No, no, close my eyes, it doesn't exist then occasionally the eruptions are, well, disease and war, basically. Mental disease, heart disease, emotional disease, physical war are the reflections of our own denial. Like St. Mick Jagger says in Sympathy for the Devil, who killed the Kennedys? After all, it was you and me who killed the Kennedys. Why? Our collective denial. What you don't want to look at will keep following you. Now, this is not to be macho, you're a piece of shit, I need more courage. No. Be completely honest with your fear. Be honest with the denial. I hate it. It's, life's too painful or whatever. I'm scared. Mike did a healing on me. Thank you very much, Mike. After the sweat lodge... I had a big piece of my energy come up, an old energy. You could say it's an old lifetimes, a pattern of lifetimes for me on earth. And he sat there for an hour and went through my body with his fingers, basically, to get at this fucking thing. And it's a slippery motherfucker. Your, your deep, slippery denial unconsciousness, we can call them demons, basically. You can call them on, you know, repressed life force, upside down life force, or something that when you deny it, you put it outside. Imagine there's a dog that really is part, or a child. You have a child that is actually a part of you, and you don't like the child because they're handicapped or something, and you stick them in the basement because you're embarrassed about them. There's still people doing that around the world. We used to do it. A hundred years ago, people would just go, that's our retarded daughter or son. Just stick them in the basement, leave them there feed them, put them in a box. Still happens occasionally you'll hear in the news. Well, when you've done that with a piece of yourself, that turns into a demented feral, like a feral spirit entity. And you can call that a demon. They're just on pure survival, fight or flight. Well, there's a whole story to that. Mechanics of hell. There are large pieces that actually are bigger than human spirits that are denial. You can call these super demons, kind of, you know. Um, and then there's small pieces of humans. There's a whole hierarchy of, of denial spirits, dark spirits, in the sense anti-life spirits, vampire stuff, um, feeders, monsters of all kinds. Created from un healed, unholy, not whole pieces of human consciousness because we are gods. 
Don't you know ye are gods? Jesus says finally one day out on the mountains and the hills. In the hills of eastern Judea, Jesus says the truth. Don't you know you're fucking gods, people? He's probably holding his head in his hands, being a little bit overwhelmed or uh, frustrated. No, we don't, Master. Life of Brian, here we come. <laughs> don't follow me. We, we, we don't. We, yes, Master, what else should we do? Fanatic followers. Oh, my God. Are you serious? Yep. Why? Because we don't want to face ourselves. Or it's too painful. It's only painful because it has accumulated. One little, one little spider bite somewhere is not going to kill you, but a thousand of them accumulated, yeah, they could. So when you've avoided your stuff for you know, many lifetimes and try to hide the, the demented pieces of yourself, or the, mostly it's scared, it's just judged against our own pieces of consciousness. If you judge against your rage... You, the main thing is the rage and the terror. The grief and the ecstasy. Right? Your bliss, you've judged against. That's scary. You'll start melting into God. Super sadness. Rage and terror. Fear and rage. Those four things are basically what's created the whole fucking mess. That we've judged against those things. I was shaking like almost fibrillating, but just shaking with cold terror as Mike was working on me. And I was fully, well, fully conscious. I was conscious of one other particular lifetime where I could see a culture that used to, it was the Aztec culture that used to do blood sacrifice. And not, they're not the only ones. The Jews, the Jews did it. You know, they used to sacrifice their own children to Molech. Um, it's done everywhere. Africa, India, you know, Native American. Hawaii, sweetie pie Hawaiians. Guess what? They used to sacrifice little boys. Some of the bad kahunas on the big island. There's a cave on the north of the big island where they get seduced. It's the dark side. And uh, they would used to rape young boys and murder them in these caves in northern Hawaii. Mm -hmm. This supposedly idyllic, beautiful Hawaii, hula hula, beautiful culture. Yeah, on the dark side of the island, the warlike shit, the men used to steal soul energy from young boys by raping them and murdering them. No different than the Vatican or secret fucking cabals or... You know, the Illuminati of today. So, when people think, oh, we're better than them, shut the fuck up. If you go to Hawaii, there's a really dark undercurrent. Really nasty fucking undercurrent. It's just the usual story. Which is why Captain Cook eventually showed up and they had to be colonized. Because doing that to your own children, you're going to draw an outside wake-up call. There is no escape the only choice there is is to align with the Tao and go, okay, let me see my terror, my rage, my fear, or deny it all the way. And now I'm going to tell another truth bomb. Again, of course, filter this according to your own current belief system. There is a way home to... There's two ways home, basically. In, in general, there's millions of ways in particular a way home. One is to merge back with Source. I and my father are one. I and my mother are one. The other is to cease existing. The, via, the, via, the way of light, if you will, the way of expansion of consciousness, or the way of contraction of consciousness. Denial spirits are denying life. They are contracting consciousness to the point where consciousness ceases to exist, i.e., you could call it, now here's, gonna, here's some fear coming our way, this is the stuff we've avoided looking at, the extinguishment of souls, extinguishing, not bodies, big fucking deal, you know, souls, souls can merge with the oneness, like someone like Shiva is much, 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 much bigger than me, 
he's merged with solar system. He was also prevalent in our IOS ceremonies just now. Or you can compress. Imagine meth addicts on the back fucking on the back streets of Detroit right now. Meth addicts, prostitutes, men and women on the back streets of inner cities of America. They are seeking a compression of consciousness. Just shut the world out. Not meth, whatever. I, uh, heroin, I guess, is more accurate for that one. But so is meth. Meth is mixed with some rage. They want out of consciousness. They don't want to feel what their daddy did to them or whatever the pain is in their consciousness that is causing them to want to... Just, just take the pain away. I want to be sedated, right? Lobotomized, whatever. Just take it away. I just want to go floating in a place where I don't feel anything. And that ultimately, source takes those pieces of consciousness back into itself. So you can, quote, go home to source by reducing your consciousness. But it's a very painful path. Yeah. So, and the other way home is to relax and widen, relax and open, relax and receive. But you, can we have some compassion for a little bit for souls that don't want to exist? That's when the people say, well, it has to be created. That energy will reveal that type of, you know, they say, well, I didn't ask to be born. So you have this argument with, with source or with your own self. So that's the pain, that's the suffering. There are harvests. Why do you think those religions talk about harvesting of souls? You, I'm sure there's 100,000 Christian churches in America all the soul harvest, the harvest church, the vineyard. Let's make the harvest. Each grape is a soul. Let's trample it and fucking drink its essence. Pretty nasty. It's basically all vampire. But it's right for some beings to go through that. It's their business. Thank you, Katie Byron. My business, their business, God's business. I am not in charge. Until so you can make souls, you're not in charge. Until you can make sons, until you can make a physical heart, you're not in charge. It's beyond your pay scale. You're just concerned with, don't worry, compassion comes naturally. The clouds, when they are full, they rain on everything and love everything. When you're full of your self, of, when you're full of real source God, when you're full of life force, chi, work, you will naturally be compassionate and help people. Or whatever. You'll do Genghis Khan's role to wipe out whole corrupt civilizations. Fill yourself with the Tao and the rest will follow naturally. Beautiful. So this concept of denial and spirits is what has plagued earth for a long time. Because heart spirits, expansion spirits, spirits who enjoy the daylight, spirits who enjoy sharing love, who enjoy exchange, who like uh, expansion, or at least consciousness, they can't imagine, because they're not like that. How many times, lately I've been hearing a lot of people say, God, I have to remind myself, not everyone is like me. We have a default position, which is the way I'm experiencing the world. This is mostly unconscious. That's how others experience. Didn't you see that? And then you, know, and then you ask someone, there, no, I, didn't you see how he did that to her? And, she, and someone else would say, no, no, I saw her doing that to him. We don't experience, quote, 
consciousness, reality, or situation is the same way. Not everyone is like me. Not everyone's consciousness wiring system is like mine. Pop out of thinking there is only one true reality or there's truth. There's no truth. It's like the elephant, you know. 50 blind people touching an elephant will have 50 different descriptions of the elephant. You download that into yourself and get it. Wow. They are literally experiencing whatever this soup of consciousness is differently than me. This will give you a leg up. This will give you a strategic advantage in the consciousness game. <laughs> Let me feel how they are experiencing things. It can be really interesting. So be concerned with my alignment with whatever it is that creates souls, creates hearts, creates ladybugs, creates suns, creates planets, creates gravity, creates time. What is it that creates gravity and time and solar systems? I want to align with that. I want to work in alignment. Here's another choice. You can work in alignment with a creative force, let's just call it that, or in opposition to it. You can be in denial of it or in flow with it. Now, I'm not saying one's wrong or the other. I'm not. Some of us are here to be denial spirits. But for heart people, we're sort of insisting, no, you should be like us. You should enjoy family time. You should enjoy love and light and kindness. And how the fuck do we know what they should be doing? It's pretty damn arrogant if you think about it. Who died and made you go? That they should be just like you. And the denial spirits, those who seek extinction and pain, they, they seek extinction, basically, the extinguishment of consciousness. They can't tell you that because they're in denial of everything. That's why the black sheep of the family will always fuck up. He or she is just the reflection, just like we are. They're, we are the creators of the killing of JFK, literally, and John Lennon and Jesus Christ and whoever. Because it's our collective denial that adds to the soup that, the, that this uh, ex-dark police chief for Batista is actually, check this out, historically documented, the fucking doorman at the Dakota Hotel the night that John Lennon is shot. What a coincidence. the secret Cuban assassination squad that never could, could. His name was Perdomo, Jose Perdomo. He starts working there just a week or two or a month before John Lennon is shot. He's seen walking up to David Chapman, who has some weird church he works for in Cambodia. I'm just giving you an example of denial here, even though Mick Jagger was on to it. Uh, he, so this Dave, David Chapman, who's officially still in jail, you know, officially killed John Lennon, which is bullshit. The guy couldn't shoot straight at all. But, and he works, he has somehow pays for an apartment in Honolulu, has no source of income, and works for World Vision Church, a quote, Christian American church in Cambodia. That was a total CIA front, front job, just like Air America or whatever, right? He's working with them in Cambodia doing what? Probably in some back rooms being mentally programmed through the MK Ultra programs, the mind control that then 
Chapman, they use J.D. Salinger's book, Catcher in the Rye. They've used it for other assassinations. They just think it's funny how much they can get away with. And he's standing there outside the Dakota. He's actually worshipping John. This is the flip denial. He's a total fan of the Beatles. He has John sign one of their albums. He's like a total fan. Well, after he has, supposedly, which he doesn't do, he might have shot a gun off, but he couldn't, you know, the shots in John Lennon were so close they couldn't even count the, how many, if it was three or four shots. They were so accurately shot. There's no way Chapman could have done that. And then this Jose Perdomo, nice name, Perdition, goes up, grabs him by the shoulder like, like Spock grip, looks him straight into the eyes. This is part of the Mind Control Ultra program. says, do you know what you just did? You killed John Lennon. He programs him with it so that he will actually confess to it, admit to it, and they've been working on him. They've used trigger words. This is all you can look it up. MK Ultra. Jose Perdomo, the former fucking black torture head of police for Batista. The men who killed John Lennon, etc. If you're interested in that stuff. That we're so blind that even those facts are right there. It wasn't written about until seven years later by the advocate or the village voice in New York. No one could look up. He's the fucking doorman there. Because we collectively don't want to handle it. It's the same reason we can't have collective disclosure quite yet about UFOs. The people get the government they deserve, Benjamin Franklin said. The people get the level of consciousness that they deserve, that they're ready for, that they want it. We're getting exactly what we want. I want fucking hot dogs. I want diabolical, dialectic, fucking gladiatorial politics. Bloodthirsty. We're no better than the common fucking seats in the Roman Coliseum. Kill them! Fuck them! Murder bloodlust. That's what we want. Or, that's the morphic field that's mainly programmed into the American populace at this moment. Otherwise, we wouldn't have gladiator politics. Debate tomorrow, whenever it is. I want Trump to fucking knock her out. I want Hillary to show him what a piece of shit, fucking unconscious, misogynistic piece of male shit Trump is. Um, you know, dictatorial Hitler. I want her to knock him out. That's all that's going on tomorrow, mostly. How many people tomorrow at the debate are going to be going, hey, I wonder if there's a consensus or some kind of common ground. Will there be any energy that wants common ground tomorrow at the American debate for president? I think hardly any. They're all spectators eating fucking, imagine a spectator. This exists. Imagine somewhere in the galaxy where we don't eat popcorn at the gladiator. You know, the, the Roman... Caesar used to throw bread to the people. That was the big thing. They had big bread baskets and they'd throw it to the cheap seats while they're eating grapes and God knows what, duck liver or something. The Romans were totally into eating every animal on the planet. Bloodlust. Eating meat. Consuming other life forces. But they'd throw bread to the common people. Yeah. Like cheap fucking bread. No different than throwing it to the pigeons. So, how many people just feel that? This, this is part of shock therapy to realize where we're at. How many people tomorrow at the debate are actually going, hmm, or could they even imagine that Hillary and Trump would go, wow, we agreed on that. And they could actually have an energy of civ civil debate meaning I respect my opponent and I really love you underneath as we're both humans and this is just a game we're playing. It's like true sportsmanship. Muhammad Ali and George Foreman and uh, Frazier, here's the story, okay. Feel, this, feel the difference. Muhammad Ali had more fucking goddamn humanity and caring than any of the, you know, the political shit that's going on right now or has for a long time. When they were most doing that big show, the first fight, you know, or, or after they'd done three fights, Frazier and Ali, which people go, oh, I tell violence, shut the fuck up. The violence in yourself you haven't even felt yet. You know, 
because Muhammad Ali was a god. He was like Elvis. He, was, he carried a huge god energy. Now, I know Parkinson's got him, which is very sad, but it's part of the deal sometimes. After the big show, Joe, Joe Frazier is so angry at one of the press conferences. He's going after Ali. It has to be restrained. It's for real. But Muhammad Ali knew it was a show. It's just a show. Muhammad Ali takes Joe Frazier's little 10-year-old son aside because Joe had let his son come to one of those things where they're acting like they're going to kill each other just for the show, putting it on so they'll sell more tickets. Muhammad Ali takes Joe Frazier's 10-year-old son aside and he says, I forget his name, Well, he tells him, you know, you know your daddy and I, we, we, that's just for show. That's just for show. We really don't hate each other. Your daddy is a good man. Now feel the heart in that. That Muhammad Ali would take his opponent, arguably the biggest fight, the biggest rivalry ever in sports, Sir Fraser Ali. He would take his son aside and make sure that young man's heart is not being scarred by what he's watching. Do you think there's any of that fucking feeling tomorrow at the debate between Trump and Hillary? No. And let's not blame Trump and Hillary, because they are just pieces, out, outpouring, actual physicalized manifestations of the collective energy of Americans. Where's our compassion for each other? And, and we kill those that bring the message of reconciliation, finding common ground. All we are saying, right, John Lennon, give, give peace a chance. What do we do with John Lennon? We have perdomo, perdition, black secret police shit that works with the CIA. Kill him. Why? Because he was ready to get on the road again. He had just written, he'd been spent five years away raising his little boy. I'm just sitting here watching the wheels go round and round, right? I'm not going in. I'm going, don't you miss the big time? No, I'm just raising my boy. But he's coming out again. Put that album out, he's ready to come out again. The CIA couldn't risk him becoming political again. Okay? What was that election coming up? Reagan. Reagan. Just like Nixon before. So... They, so they're learning, right? Just like with Iraq's war right now. They don't allow any of the coffins to be filmed. There's no news reporters allowed in the field. News reporters were allowed in the 60s in Vietnam in the fucking field. But when you do that, you get um, television, children fed, bullet strikes the helmet's head. That's Jim Morrison saying, truly, the television, children fed. And we saw it in our living rooms, fucking American and people getting shot in Agent Orange, and the people then, if they see it, they don't want the war. So now, it's very smart. No coffins are allowed to be filmed, ret filmed returning from Iran. I unloaded in the middle of the night, literally at midnight, uh, on the dark off, you know, Air Force bases, right? When John Lennon made a fucking dent in it, imagine this. No, I mean, fuck, that's still getting from her. But it's us. We want our gladiatorial political pit bull. That's all Hillary and Clinton Trump is. Gladiators. They're like no better than pit bull fighting. We want pit bull fighting. Pit bull number A, Trump. Pit bull number two, Hillary. May my pit bull win. Let me put some money on it. Yeah. So the responsibility, like Benjamin Franklin said, government they deserve. The Tao is a perfect reflection. There's no injustice. There's no injustice. Your belief in evil is a measure of your ignorance. Your belief in injustice is a measure of your ignorance. this all. Because we all have a grievance against God's source. People 
All I mainly feel is there's a grievance, meaning I want to sue God. I have an abs- my father's an asshole. He created me against my will. He's not giving me what I deserve. And there's a lot of energy, you can feel that in people, of biting the hand that's trying to help. Source God, the Tao, is trying to help all the time. Because you know what spoiled kids feel like? Most of us are spoiled kids. Or we're moving towards becoming full-on demons. Full-on denial spirits. The more you look at it, it is happening exactly the way it needs to happen. There is no injustice. The bigger you go, everything makes total sense. Source, real source, is completely just. But, but, but what about child molestation to us? Go bigger in your consciousness. What about it? Go bigger in your consciousness. Seek ye first. Hang on just a sec, okay? Hang on. I'll be right back. Yeah. Um, maybe in two hours? Two hours? Yeah. Okay, tomorrow. I'm on the radio. I'm sorry. Room service. Uh, the maid, actually. But yes. Yeah, so it's happening exactly the way it should. Think that, feel that one. I haven't thought of that example. Gladiatorial pit bull politics. Why? Oldest trick in the book, divided and conquer. One of my good friends, he's a big deal in Hollywood. He's got his offices right there across from the Ivy. He is full of rage and anger at how stupid Trump is. and He's just like a raging fucking pit bull of hatred. What's he really angry about? Or, or, or what are the Trump people really angry at Hillary about? It's not about Benghazi. What's it about? What, where, where, where's the rage coming from? So, get real to heal. What is it in me that is really raging? What am I angry at? Existence? Why don't we smoke and drink and kill ourselves? We know what to do. Don't eat grains. Don't eat sugar. Don't eat chemical food. Move your body and eat right. Open your heart and talk to God. Move your body and eat right. Open your consciousness and let the source clean you out. It's not that hard. Be nice to each other. Move your body and eat right. Open yourself in meditation. It's three steps. Be nice to each other. That's it. Be nice to each other. One commandment. Be considerate of each other. How about that? Be consider the other. There you go. I should write these down. Consider the other. <laughs> New commandment. <laughs> Suggestion? Consider the other. Eat right. Move your body. Allow your body to participate naturally. I should write. Maybe I should write these down. <laughs> Allow your body to participate naturally. Be open in your spirit to God's source flowing through your nervous system. That's it. But we don't want to. So we resist. So we pollute ourselves. Stop polluting yourself. Allow the Tao. Yeah, that was the other t-shirt. We're going to do these t-shirts, by the way. I'm going to start wearing them in my videos. My friend Duncan in England. We're going to make t-shirts like that one. Allow the Tao. That's it. Feel it. Allow the Tao. Sometimes that doesn't mean you sit around all peaceful looking like Eckhart Tolle or, you know, Ramana Maharshi. No, sometimes the Tao is, get the fuck out of here. I was a little strong with a maid right then because she wanted to yak at me. I don't have time right now. Allow the Tao.
the blame game is, is just, you know, an endless avoidance. Think about it. It's, it, it we're seduced. I'm going to watch the debate tomorrow. But it's just a symptom of how easy it is to control populations to harvest energy off them. Divide and conquer. Smart people, too. One of my friends growing up in high school, his father was one of the inventors of the Titan fucking missile. So nuclear fucking missile guy, right? But these guys are bright. MIT type stuff, right? Um, JPL laboratories, all that stuff. Try, uh, forgetting the little California college. But anyway, totally seduced into liberalism. Buying it hook, line, and sink of the fucking democratic bullshit. And others are super smart, totally seduced into, yeah, they're fucking evil. If we just, you know, do the right wing stuff, it'll all be good. Very smart people, totally seduced by them. My neighbor in, in uh, Sedona, totally seduced by left, leftist stuff. He even went to Cuba before it was legal. Divided and polarized into duality and fighting ourselves. And drained. Oldest game in the book, Machiavelli. The Prince. So, we're getting exactly what we deserve. But you, at any time, can opt out, can start to opt out of the game and enjoy the ride. Be filled up with the Tao, with the Chi, with the life force in your body, your kundalini, and have orgasmic energy through your literal body, your psyche, your, and start enjoying. I am, more and more. I'm having a good time. I felt ecstatic. I spent another day at the source. The actual place in where we're going, Peru, Mike named it the source. Source Peru. So, so everyone walked around. The workers with overalls and stuff, it just says, the, says source on it. It's really kind of cute. It's really sweet. I'm fucking lucky. No, I'm not. Took me 20 years this lifetime, and God knows how others. I was like, I want this. Yeah, there you go, Tobias. Ask and you shall receive. What do you want? Now, when you're coming out of being in a toxic place where you've accumulated karma, cleaning is not that much fun. Cleaning is not that much fun. You know, it's like being in bed, convalescing from a, I don't know, some kind of disease, yellow fever or something. It's not that much fun. We have to be willing to go through the detox. Or you've been doing heroin. That's an even better example. We've been doing consciousness heroin, thinking that there's a magic pill and we can blame our shit on someone else, we can dump it somewhere else, and we can somehow get satisfied by doing that. And then once you realize that heroin is really just killing me, those first 48 hours, which is the detox, are not fun, apparently. I've never done it. Well, that's exactly what's going on for us now as souls. I'm willing to do my detox. What is this about? God is the trump card. The life force source can clean up anything. It's the magic cleaning solution. Beautiful. So, no one can stop us, no one can stop me, no one can stop you, because you are the director. Decide what you want and it will come in due time and sometimes very quickly. We're right on the precipice, we're right on the edge of getting free technology now, the disclosure of the 23 different races of humanoids from around the galaxy that have bases on the, on the far side of the moon. The fact that we have <coughs> anti-gravity and free energy technologies, all that stuff. But look how blinded you have to be. It's in our own consciousness. The reason people can't see the UFOs when, when I see them, it's because they, they they're not ready. It's too much of a shock to the system. Dr. Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, who does the Disclosure Project, talks about one sees in southern France, and this woman that was coming on his thing said, oh, I want to see them, I want to see them, I'm welcome, welcome them. 
when they went out there and the ship appeared, she, she uh, promptly fainted and fell to the ground and didn't recall anything. Why? Because there's certain unconscious... Her, her, her conscious mind is saying, oh, I'm ready. But she's not in touch with her unconscious fears. Intellectuals tend to be this way. That's why intellectuals are so easily fooled because they're stuck in their head. But they're not feeling their body and they're not feeling their psychological. They're barely feeding, feeling their bodies. And, and so are all of us on different levels. That's why I start with the inner body awakening for people. Let's start feeling our bodies first. And then your psycholog- feel, feeling the psychological stuff. If you think about it, university professor types and intellectuals, can, can you get them even to feel their hearts or their intuitions? Sometimes, yes. But the majority of it is stuck in what? L- logician hell. Lo- lo- you know, logic. Logic is totally illogical. Logic is totally illogical when it's used as an avoiding mechanism, as a denial mechanism to feel your heart and your body. It's a cliche. The nerdy person who can't feel their, can't dance and they can't feel their heart. It's a fucking cliche across the planet. Television shows, the Big Bang Theory is all about that. The nerdy fucking head stuff. And we think humor is going to solve it, but it doesn't. Humor is a temporary relief mechanism. Humor is a temporary on the pressure cooker so the whole thing doesn't fucking blow up. Absolutely vital, incredibly powerful tool. But it never solves the underlying pressure. The pressure cooker is always there. The only thing that will take the pressure off is actually unscrewing the lid after you've released enough of the pressure that you can and going down into the full pot, your body, your emotions, your subconscious, and cleaning it up. Then finally, peace beyond all understanding. All that understanding is bupkis. It's nothing. It's standing under. I might have invented that term term 10 years ago. I don't know. Standing under the real truth. Understanding. It is not an overview. It's not big perspective. It's standing under the truth. Inner standing is better. Overstanding is a little better perspective. Inner standing, feeling from within, overstanding, bigger perspective. Understanding is the least effective thing. Oh, I know about that. No, you don't. You think you know. You get a tiny little mental orgasm that gives you a false feeling of that you know something. You don't know any of that. That's why Socrates hits that place where he says the very famous statement, all I know is that I know nothing. That's the beginning. That's the beginning of humility. That's the beginning with Don Juan with has to get UCLA anthropology professor Carlos Castaneda to stop thinking he knows something. The Yaqui Indian. You've got to understand, in the, in the Hispanic community, the natives are looked down on as pieces of shit. America's niggers, you know, in the old way, is what the, the Hispanic communities, the Latino communities do to the natives. So to have Don Juan, one day after they've been working together for three years, Don Juan, the Yaqui Indian, no formal education, teaching UCLA anthropology professor, Carlos Castaneda, and you got to understand, in the 60s, to have a Hispanic be a college professor was a big-ass deal, right? Progress and all that. So one day, Don Juan, the shaman, Yaqui Indian, a forgotten fucking tribe in the Sonoran Desert, in the desert between Arizona and northern Mexico. He looks at, at Carlos and says, Do you think you and I are equals, Carlos? And Carlos's little liberal bleeding heart says, Don Juan, of course. Meaning, he thinks he's coming at it from a native perspective where he's just the guy who carries the wood on the side of the road. You see it in Peru. You know, the native people are the most oppressed. They're, 
carrying crap in plastic bags, hauling stuff on bear, you know, barrow, wheelbarrows, basically, or you know, these little carts. There's a hierarchy. So Don Juan looks at Carlos and says, do you think you and I are equals? And Carlos's heart goes into, of course, Don Juan. Of course, there's no way I would ever look down on you. And Carlos goes on for a while and trying to reassure the poor native guy that you're, I would never look down on you. And Don Juan, as a true Toltec master, looks back at Carlos and goes, no, we're not. I'm a man of impeccability and you're a piece of shit. <laughs> right? He's be doing it with kindness and love, but he's making a point to Carlos. You're still an arrogant logician. You're still stuck in your head. You think you know something because you have a college, some college degrees. I am a man of impeccability. I'm an impeccable warrior, and you're a piece of shit. That's a true master there, Don Juan, teaching Carlos, you still think logic or understanding is important. It has its place as a little tool. But not, of course, logic has a place as a tool. A plus B equals C. You know, sure, mag- mathematics, of course, engineering. It's good for engineering, that's it. You know, and some little bit of, you know, um, being able to uh, reach conclusions and, you know, investigate things, scientific principles. Yeah, but the scientific principle is tiny. It's a tiny little tool in your tool belt. You start worshipping one little tiny tool in your tool belt, of course things are going to get really weird. Ridiculous. So inner feeling, understanding is nothing. It's just a tiny tool on the tool belt. It's like asking someone, you know, we make a joke out of it. Uh, when was the War of 1812, Johnny? I mean, that's how ridiculous sort of academic learning is. I know. I went through that at the upper echelon. First time I ever saw that was at the University of Connecticut where I was working with these... Gene- they, they were doing the Human Genome Project. This would have been like 81 or something. And uh, I remember seeing on my advisor professor, my biology biologist advisor professor's door, he had a little sign on there. That's why I actually liked him. It's really cool. And where it said, BS, i.e. Bachelor of Science, equals bullshit. MS, Master of Science, equals more shit. PhD equals piled higher and deeper. I got it. Right then, I'm like 19 or something, 18. Got it, got it, thanks. Yeah? So when we get a society that worships science but doesn't heal themselves emotionally, then the real power is relegated, subjugated, given away, lost to pit bull politics. Pit bull fighting politics. We'll have a witness of it tomorrow. I can predict with relative certainty there won't be a warm feeling or any tears of finding mutual ground between Trump and Hillary tomorrow at the debate. It'll be mostly, how can I throw weapons at you, zingers? How can I get you? How can I attack you? How can I make you look bad? Full-on pit bull politics. No better than two gladiators tied to big blocks of stone in the Roman arena handed out swords where they're forced to sit within two feet of each other and see who's going to be able to kill the other. That's what we're doing tomorrow night. Why? What does that reflect? It reflects that attitude inside Americans' consciousness. That's where we're at. See it for what it is. Come out of denial. Start healing yourself. See it for what it is. Come out of denial. See the divided and conquered game. Become your own master. Start enjoying the world. St. Jim Morrison said, I want to get my kicks before the whole shithouse explodes. Now, I don't think the shithouse is actually going to explode. In some, in some timelines, it will. But nothing can stop you. 
In every major catastrophe ever on earth, there's always been thousands of souls that made the transition beautifully. Source God is in his heaven and on earth and in her earth. You can have nuclear bombs. I used to have a teacher named Lester Levins and an American awake master. Used to do the Sedona method. It still exists. It's still out there. He would say, as he would meet with his people at his holy temple, McDonald's at 7th Street and Camelback Avenue in Phoenix, Arizona. He would meet every morning in McDonald's. He's a Zen master as well, so he'd have fun with it. He'd sit in front of people and put four fucking pure refined sugars in his coffee just to mess with people. Well, he said one morning, I wasn't actually there at the time, but my friend Keith told me about it later when we met that same day. He said, Lester was telling us today that you could have a nuclear bomb go off right here in the parking lot next to the Holy McDonald. And if you were vibrating in a I and my source are one frequency, that bomb could not affect you. It would be at a different level of frequency. It would be like, just like the worlds are separate now, just like the fairy kingdoms are a different dimension for most people. Nothing can stop you from having what you want. Nothing can stop you from your own awakening. I'm excited. I used to feel completely oppressed by the system. I'm not anymore. I'm wary. I'm not a dumb, dumb, dummy about it. You know, I got to do my taxes and deal with some shit and all that. But I'm excited. One full conscious breath throughout the day. Allow the Tao. Allow the cleaning of yourself. Start to actually feel your chakras, your energy systems. Forgive yourself. I know it's not always a bed of roses. Of course not. Allow the world to play out the way it wants. Tell the world what you want. What do you want on earth? Imagine the life that you want. Tell the universe what you want. Not reasonably as well, you know. If you're not six foot six, you're not going to be playing in the NBA. So don't. Oh, I'm a god. I'm a son myself. Okay, that's a long term. Probably, you know, you're going to have to. If you clean yourself out quickly enough, it can happen instantly. It really can. But start asking for what you want. Bypass the government. Who gives a shit? They're just puppets. They're just reflections of our unconscious. Participate if you feel led. If you feel led to participate, then that's your god role. I'm voting, you know, but I'm not going to engage at that divided and conquered level. When I meet my neighbors, if they're totally hating the opposition, I don't argue with them. I find something common ground for us to share with. We love dogs. You know, I, I find the humanity, I find that, take the rage and start converting it into a search for more illumination. Talk to everyone about God, but in their language. If it's a white neo-Nazi guy, I'm going to talk to them differently than my uh, friend, neighbor, professor type. But I'll find common ground. And occasionally, if the Tao says, confront them, I'll do that. Like Don Juan did with Carlos, said, no, I'm an impeccable warrior. And you're a piece of shit. Interesting times. So feel that feeling in yourself. Nothing can stop me from waking up. Nothing can stop me from waking up. All right. Much love. Any comments? Anything you wanted to share? Anything you want to ask a short question about? Hmm. Tobias, this is Misty. Thank you. Hmm. 
Um, that was really good. I've been very overwhelmed with the issues of the world and trying mm. to find my place, my voice, and you mm. know, my sense of activism versus focusing on my own issues. And yeah. uh, it, it can get very overwhelming, and I have that urge just go unconscious because I can't figure yeah. it out. Yeah. So and your message it. helped a lot mm. because you nice. don't deny the reality of the of the world's issues and the problems that we face. You don't deny it. But you help put it into perspective. Yeah. Thank you. And so and sometimes we don't need to know. Like one thing Spirit's been teaching me lately is, Tobias, you can't always know. Like, should I do this or should I do that? Like that old bilat the, the duality, it's either or. You should move now or you should get out of this relationship or you should open to that thing or you should do this or do X, Y. You know, no. Sometimes you don't know the horns of a dilemma. And be patient with it. I, I feel overwhelmed. I just want to do nothing. Go back to the everything and the nothing. That's another T-shirt we're doing. Do nothing, get everything. <laughs> we came up with that one, actually. Me and Mark, a guy from London, guy from London who just attended the ayahuasca. Do nothing, get everything. I like that one. I'm writing it down here, so I'm remembering it. Yeah. It's not even where it's both and more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, we got to do that one. Fuck, that's our show. <laughs> stealing that from our show, yeah. Very good. Yeah, exactly. Give yourself a break. And uh, be patient with ourselves. Sometimes, the, uh, I'm human. I'm human. What's wrong with that? I'm unconscious for a while. Or it feels over overwhelming or I'm overloaded. Yes. Yes. The Tao allows itself that. It goes, I don't know. God is ignorant. There's a video I have I'm going to put out. Or I re-record. I think it didn't work very well last time. But God is willing to go up to something new and say, I don't know. I don't know what the right thing to do is. I mean, that's just smart. Instead of going, oh, I know, I know, let's do this. And you do something completely stupid. Just because you don't want to look bad. I don't know. I feel overwhelmed. I'm irritated. I'm human. And then it changes. Usually in about 10 seconds. <laughs> if you really surrender, it actually changes inst instantly. If you completely embrace it, then you erase it. It's really cool. Feel the power of that. Nothing can trap me because I will always embrace it and then, then it has to be erased. I didn't set up the game. God did. The Tao did. It's just how it works. I'm not fighting anything. I'm not opposed to anything. I simply go, yeah, there's child slave trafficking. Instead of feeling overwhelmed and panicked and like you're going to want to kill yourself, you're like, yeah, let me feel that. Let me try to be compassionate like a Buddha. Let me really feel it. I'm embracing the fact that it does exist. I don't deny it. And then I add whatever the Tao wants to add to it. And the Tao tends to want to dissolve, relax, heal, turn it on the theme. The Tao tends to want to heal any constricted situation. Anybody else? Any thoughts, comments? I will not be back next week because I'll be in New Jersey for Sunday. But the one after that, yes. And then they should be pretty regular for, for my uh, course schedule on weekends. So we'll be back whenever that would be, October 9th or something. Let me find it. It will be October 9th. Hey, what a guess. What do you know? Yes. All right. Much love. Namaste. Thank you. I, I really like this one. I might actually put it out on YouTube.
I'm just also going to present tickets for what we do. I wish I had the good microphone with me, but I didn't want to travel with it. But okay, cool. So back October 9th, I will send this recording out uh, Wednesday, Thursday. And if I don't for any reason, remind me. Um, and we'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thank All you. Right. Thanks to Thank Bye. You. Thank you. Bye. 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 Much love.